Hi guys, my name is Alex Alberts from the marketing department here at Horizon Hobby. And today is Friday, so we have a new product for you. And I have, I'm, I have here Matt Andron from the product development side. And we're going to talk to you today about the new E-Flight. Uh, sorry, here for a second. Okay. Quickly share my phone here. Uh, so today we're going to talk about the new E-Flight Mo 1.5 meter. And Matt, what do we have here? Well, this is a uh, really cool 1.5 meter rendition yep. of a basically kind of a bush plane is where it gained its popularity. Uh, the airplane's in full size, uh, has been out a long time. Okay. It's a very popular airplane. I actually used to work for a, a glider operation, and my, the owner of the operation had a mall. It wasn't the, the M7 version, which is the swept tail. His was the round tail. So I actually have a little bit of personal knowledge about the All airplane. Right, right. So very cool airplane, like I said. Uh, basically a four-seat kind of civilian uh, stole aircraft. So, so kind of a neat rendition that uh, we've done here in E-Flight. All right, cool. So one of the guys that I've seen uh, posting online is, um, is they're comparing this to the timber. Yeah, now, a little bit. I know you have a lot of time with timber. This a little bit, a little so, bit, yeah. Uh, what are the few differences between this, uh, this one and the timber? Well, you know, the timber, when I designed it, it was... The whole purpose behind that was being nothing but short takeoff and landing. Right. You know, we actually right. kind of sacrificed a little bit of the aerobatic characteristics uh, that we could have had in the airplane to get a really short takeoff and landing airplane. Okay. It really flies light on the wing, huge flaps. Okay. Um, this, you know, because it's a scale airplane, you know, we had to, we wanted to put, you know, the clear windows, the pilot figure inside. If you actually look inside to check out the product video, there's a really cool shot of the instrument panel dash in there. Uh, you know, we got the antennas and some extra plastic bits. So, you know, while we were trying to make this scale, it adds a little bit of weight by doing that. You know, you have to have a little bit more structure in here right. to reinforce the wing mount right. if you have all these kind of openings that are covered in plastic. Whereas the timber with its, you know, kind of foam simulated windows makes it just lighter for ultimate short takeoff, you know, makes it lighter. This airplane ends up being about... I think about 16 or 17 ounces heavier than the timber because, right. I mean, it's painted. you got right. the plastic details. The fuselage is a little bit wider. But, you know, we wanted to make a nice scale airplane out of it. So. Right. So I remember when we released the Carbon C Cessna, the big one, yep. uh, a lot of guys were saying, well, it doesn't have any windows right, or right. pilot or cockpit details. So here's the answer for you guys. So <laughs> for you guys that want to have, you know, the scale details, like the full scale size, then this is the one for you. Absolutely. Uh, what kind of technology do we have in this one? So this one is uh, AS3 with Safe Select. Okay. Uh, it's available in a bind and fly basic, which uh, has those features as well as a plug and play. So for the okay. guys who already have receivers laying around, already have uh, some stuff, you can get it, get in the air as well. Awesome. And so battery recommendations. As, are we doing 4S in this one? or? No? Uh, yeah, you actually can. Okay. Uh, the, the battery recommendations on this airplane are incredibly wide. Uh, okay. We've flown at everything from a 2200 3S to a 3200 4S. Okay. So you can see I'll open the battery hatch here. It's a little bit of a small hatch, but it's, right now I have a 4S 2500 in there powering the lights. Okay. And it fits all day long. The 3200 fits in there very well and everything... Uh, Everything closes up nice and tight when you get it in. So I see, now you mentioned lights. I see leading edge and wingtip, right? Exactly. You have the, uh, the wingtip navigation lights as well as the uh, leading edge landing lights. And the cool. leading edge landing lights look really cool when you're coming into land, for sure. sure. Awesome. Now, the... One of the differences I see here is the uh, timber hat, the slats. Correct. This Correct. one doesn't. Right. But Correct. I see some... Vortex generators here? Yeah, so we uh, actually molded the Vortex generators into the foam on this one. You know, uh, okay. on the Park Zone Sport Cub and the uh, Hobby Zone uh, Carbon Cub, that's actually a plastic strip that glues on the on the wing. Right, right. Whereas this one, you know, with uh, being molded in foam, it does give that effect and does, uh, you know, make the uh, the plane fly a little bit slower with right. them on, so, uh, but doesn't really hurt aerobatic performance as much as the slats do. Now, uh, a lot of, some people are asking about transportation and how the plane, plane breaks down. Yep. Uh, are we talking two-piece wing? Uh, yes. Yeah, it's a two-piece wing. Uh, you can see the, the splits right here on either side of the fuselage. Okay. There's two bolts on each wing right on the bottom. They're uh, right. two-millimeter uh, Allen head screws, so nice and durable. You know, not like Phillips screws that are easy to strip or anything like that, so you can get a good purchase on them, get them out. And then one screw securing each side of the strut, and wings pop right off, and the struts fold up against the wings for easy transport, so they're not you know, banging around or flopping around or anything. So I see a set of floats. Yes. Are those included? They are included. Awesome. Um, so yeah, right out of the box, you can either fly it with the, kind of the large tundra style wheels or the okay. floats. Uh, the floats have a functioning water rudder with a servo that's that's in, basically built into the float. So you uh, just run that lead right up, and there's a plug in the bottom of the fuselage for you to, to allow that to work and, and hook to a water harness awesome. with the rudder. And so. I see, I think there's some plastic on the bottom for. Yep, you do have some nice uh, skid protection here for when you're coming into beach or launching. If you you know uh, skip okay. off a rock or something right. like that, it's not going to cool. dig into the foam, which makes it real nice. That's very cool. Now the tires are they're like. Um, 
some people are asking if they're soft or they're hard. Uh, they're or foam. You, they're pretty. They're pretty rigid. They don't have a lot of give to them. But because of the wire landing gear, that's where most of your shock absorption is going to come from. Okay. Uh, if you're watching like the product video, we're landing on uh, some grass and landing in the gravel there at the field, and you can see them actually taking and absorbing the bumps and awesome. stuff like that. You can also see how well they work on pavement. Uh, okay. So it, the wheels work very well in combination with kind of the springs, uh, the spring. Uh, wire landing gear that we have there, you know, it just kind of balances out real well for good. And I'm assuming taking putting the floats back on and taking or the wheels is just a couple screws. And exactly, go, right? a couple so of screws and a couple of small little okay. plates that cover the slots on the bottom. Wheels off, floats on. Put the the little cover plates back in. You're good to go. Okay, what about the up? Oh, sorry, on the um, stabilizer, is those uh, bolting in or glued on? Yes. Yeah, so out of the box, the uh, the stabilizer and vertical fin are not attached. Okay. Um, there's two screws down here for the vertical fin, and then one on the bottom, and it kind of pinches the uh, horizontal stabilizer in okay. place and everything like that and then you do have the little uh, horizontal stabilizer supports that you would have to add. So. Awesome. But the nice thing is it makes the tail very rigid. Um, the tail isn't very big so it's easy to transport with the wings off. Uh, it Pretty stays cool. on its wheels so that makes it nice. Pretty cool. So um, so we have two completion levels, right? Yes. So yep. the plug and play and Bynafly Basic. Yes. And the Bynafly Basic gave you the what, AS, AR636 Correct. receiver yep. with yep. a safe select. Um, the price on that we're looking at two sixty nine ninety nine for the Bynafly Basic and then the plug and play is 200, 250 pretty much. Yeah. Um, I think believe these are going to be available in about two or three weeks. So if you yep. want to, you want to buy one, get it now. Yeah, get on it quick. Out. It's, it's right, a fun right. airplane. I mean, we had a ball to shoot in the video. Right. Uh, you know, we went out and did some float flying with it. Went out to the field, and uh, you can see in the in the video, it's a little breezy out that day, but the plane right. handles it great. And with that much power, you can really blast through any kind of so or wind. So the, the big question here: so the, the timber is a specifically designed for stall. Right. Right. This one. It's not. How's the flight performance difference? Is it way different? Is it the similar? You know, got a scale looks on it. Yeah, or? it's it's a little tricky to kind of put your thumb on this one because they're both you know high wing, right. um, short takeoff and landing airplanes. You right. know, this one being scale, you know, does have the additional weight and stuff like that. So you're not going to get it quite as slow as the timber uh, for short takeoff and landing. Right. But you also have the forest ability with this, which gives you a little bit more power. So it's a balancing act. They they fly different, um, but they do a similar role. You know, one scale, one's kind of not. So right. you pretty much got to have them both to really, to really enjoy them both. Now, for those guys that want to just fly a long time, what's the biggest battery you can put in this thing? Right you now? might be able to fit, say, a three cell four thousand, maybe. Wow. Okay. Um, it, basically, the, you're limited by the length of the cavity because there is a foam wall in the back. So okay. if the battery gets too long, is where you're going to run into it, run into an issue. It's pretty wide and pretty deep. Um, so you can fit most packs in there, but you're going to okay. run into a length issue with some of the larger and batteries. And the, the motor is would standard, like 15 size? Correct. 15 yeah. size yep, motor. 15 okay. size so you've got plenty of power so. for it. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so I'm going to check my feet here to see if I have any questions. Uh, so far, no questions. Um, do we have anything on YouTube? Asking if there's a glider release. That's a good one. Not really a glider release on this one. I'm sure you could probably mock something in. Um, you right. know, with the 4S ability, you'd be able to tow up probably something in the two meter range pretty easily. Uh, okay. You know, something, for example, the old Park Zone KA, this right. thing can tow it up all day long. Now, for that, you probably need to modify the top of the Correct. Yeah, you have to, you know, glue in some sort of plate or plywood or some sort of release mount. Uh, there's a couple available on the market in different forms where you can mock one up or something like that. But yeah, it would pretty much do, be a, a do it yourself kind of project. So, for those guys that want to fly, because if we talk about the floats being included, mm -hmm. is there any tips or tricks about how to fly, you know, on the water, take off and landings in the water? Um, the good thing about taking off and landing on the water is you can almost always take off and land into the wind if you're, you know, lake or pond you're flying right. off is large enough. So that makes takeoff and landings easy. The usually the challenge becomes with cross taxiing, crosswind, okay. or if it's really breezy, you know, the wind can get up under a wing and kind of tip it. Um, so that's the one thing you kind of got to be careful of. Uh, also, when you stop, the airplane will always weather vane into the wind. It's very hard okay. to kind of, if there's any breeze, you kind of got to fight it and be careful that it doesn't flip over. Um, awesome. Sometimes we've even, you know, just let the plane float backwards to us and let it just weather vane <laughs> cool. and eventually very it gets, cool. gets to you. So. so I might see a lot of people just flying this out of the we go to events. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so yeah, I'm sure we'll have cool. a bunch of them at uh, Joe Nolan and stuff yeah. and, and uh, have a lot of fun with them. Oh, cool. Um, so I'm going to see here if there are any questions here. Oh, so Patrick is asking, what makes it different to the Carbon C Cup? Um, you know, it has a very similar flight envelope to the Carbon Z Cup because mm -hmm. you have the power. Um, it's just a smaller package. Okay. Um, you know, it, they're both kind of scale designs. Uh, the Carbon Z Cub doesn't really have the clear windows like you mentioned earlier, right. whereas this does. This has a little bit more scale uh, looks than the Carbon Z Cub. The Carbon Z Cub was, again, kind of a, an attempt to make a scale airplane with really high performance. I think he nailed it on that one. It's been a great seller for us for a long right. time. Um, again, that's almost almost a two-meter wingspan where this is 1.5, so it's, it's a little easier to transport. Yeah. uses smaller batteries. Okay, cool. All right, so I 
think that's pretty much will cover it for now, unless there are any other questions. Correct, yes, so only available in the, uh, the red and white scheme here. Now, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this is actually a full scale trim scheme that. Exactly, yep, this is a scheme right. you'll find on a couple. There's actually quite a few different trim schemes on the malls. Uh, you know, like I said, they've been around for a long, long time. Right. Um, so you can pretty much find them in every color scheme, every paint scheme. So I'm sure there'll be some, uh, some neat repaints that guys do on the forums as they always do with some of our products and really make them stand out and unique. Awesome. All right. Well, I think that's pretty much coverage for today. Uh, thanks, Matt, for stopping by. Absolutely. And I'll see you guys in the flying field. Take care.